Week one of the NFL season is finally upon us, which means it's week one of Cowboys Rewind. Here from the star in Frisco, I'm Kyle Yeomans, leading you over the next couple of minutes as we preview and review the week of action as the Dallas Cowboys are back into regular season action. We start things off in a big way. We go to the sticks of Madden NFL 23 with two former Cowboys, Isaiah Stanback and Barry Church, who outlined a matchup that last year was very much so in favor of one Trayvon Diggs. As we go ahead and see here, Mike Evans on the line of scrimmage did press man to man. This is what you'd love to see as a corner. You'd love to see this matchup one on one, mano y mano. The snap is gone. Here we go. Great hand placement. Mm. Oh, off the line of scrimmage. There's nowhere to go for David. disruption. There's the nowhere line. to go. There's nowhere to go. Disruption at the line. You know, Tom Brady hates that. You know, he's a timing guy. And right there, Diggs was able to disrupt that timing. He's on his hip pocket, doing everything perfect. The ball is in the air right now. And you know when the ball's in the air, that's a 50-50 ball. And the guy that wins those matchups nine times out of ten, it's Diggs. This guy had 11 interceptions for a reason. Great athletic ability, great leaping ability. Let me get off of Mike Evans right there and go to the man Diggs after he gets the interception right here. Uses his running back skills, wide receiver in high school, early in college. Oh, but that was a good hit right there. But – as you see, Diggs with the interception, right, right one of the back best. back to the beginning there. I want to point Let's out Let's run this thing else, back. BC. Let's run this thing back. That was back. a great job. Back-to-back back play, so you it know was. it's real. It was real. Right, but one of the main things that happened here is the dis disruption at the line of scrimmage. Go ahead and play it right here. Boom. You see a good job. Boom. Hands on him. He forces him to take an inside release. Force. He had to go outside. He had to come back inside. Why does that help Diggs? Because now the safety is over the top. Okay, the safety is over the top, so now he, Diggs can get his eyes back to TB12. He sees everything that's taking place, which gives him an opportunity to get a jump start on this interception right here. You see him, he's running with him. He's staying on his hip pocket. He has safety help on the inside. He's able to identify the ball, go up and get that thing. So there you have it, Trayvon Diggs, Mike Evans. It was certainly a Diggs-dominated matchup last year. Evans was held to just three receptions for 24 yards. Trayvon Diggs had two PBUs and he had an interception in that ball game, and you'd have to think with some of the injuries in the Tampa Bay wide receiving core, Tom Brady may be throwing Mike Evans' way even more here in 2022. When we come back, what does a former NFL scout think about the vulnerabilities of this Tampa Bay offense? More to come here on Cowboys Rewind. Cowboys Rewind is brought to you by AT&T, the official 5G innovation partner of the Dallas Cowboys. And by NFL Game Pass. You'll never miss a game again. Enjoy full and condensed game replays from week one to the Super Bowl. This segment is brought to you by Ashley, the official furniture store of the Dallas Cowboys. In the opening week of the 2021 regular season, the Dallas Cowboys forced Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers all the way to the brink. It took Tom Brady's 49th game winning score to drive down the field and defeat the Dallas Cowboys. 31 to 29 was the final score. This time around, the Dallas Cowboys open the season at home against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and they're going to try and get after this Tampa offense by doing a couple of different things from Dan Quinn. Now we go to Cowboys break, and Brian brought us in his scouting report and breakdown of what that Tampa Bay offense brings to the table. All right, so let's talk about it from the flip side of that. Where are they most vulnerable? They're really young inside. Uh, Luke Gadecki, the guard, is making his first start at left guard. Robert Hainsey is a tackle who's now playing center. I'm going to take advantage of those guys inside. I'm going to try and find a way to attack them, make them one-on-one -on -one block. But I'm going to make Leonard Fournette, if he's in this game, to have to pass protect. You know, and that's what I mean when you twist the front to them, make these young guys have to pass these twists and now find guys. And then all of a sudden, you run a twist up front when you know with a cross, and then you bring Parsons behind him. That's going to make these guys have to come off blocks and mm -hmm. try and figure things out. And it's also going to make Fournette have to – he hasn't worked with these guys except in practice and stuff when you're going. you got a guy like Micah Parsons that can destroy guards, and he can also destroy – running backs don't put him out on the edge that's the Buccaneers strength tackles are their strength inside is where they're a little bit uh, a little bit uh, troublesome right now did you watch the game last year against the Bucks or, or did, yes uh, the the Cowboys Bucks. Yeah. did you watch it again yeah because I'm because I I think I remember Micah saying that was probably his worst game 
Yeah. Just <laughs> n- n- not as effective. Yeah. And and the, the week two is where you really saw that jump against the Chargers. Do you think that it's a night and day difference of what what P- Brady and the Bucks are seeing from number eleven as they yeah. saw last year? Yeah, I think so. I think once that once that Dan Quinn and the staff made the determination that when Tank went down during practice, mm-hmm. they had to do something. Then all of a sudden, if you remember, the Chargers had a replacement at right tackle. Yeah. They were bad in that situation, so it really helped the Cowboys going forward. I think if you're if you're Tom Brady, and when you we always talk about Brady as you tack the middle of the pocket with him, eye level down, get eye level down, and where he's kind of looking at the rush, and when he feels rush, he's not going to want to take a sack. He'll throw the ball away. He's going to try and get the ball out quick. So you heard it there. A little bit of a breakdown from Brian brought us on this week's edition of Cowboys Break, and we've got a member of Cowboys Break, Nick Eatman, here from DallasCowboys.com now. He talked about the defense and trying to slow down Tom Brady. It's an easier thing said than done. There's a reason the man has seven Super Bowl rings. But what does Dallas and Dan Quinn have to do defensively in order to be successful this Sunday? Well, they got to unleash Micah Parsons. And I think that Micah Parsons did not play his best game. He said that. And it was his first game in the NFL's head spinning a little bit. I don't think Tom Brady's going to see the same Micah Parsons in that game as you'll see in this one Sunday night. And I think, you know, get him in all different areas. I think Anthony Barr is going to be a, another guy that's going to play offset with, with uh, Parsons, with Leighton Van Der Esch. Just that linebacker position in a hole is going to look totally different to Tom Brady. Now, he's seen it. He's seen everything there is in the last, what, 47 years that he's been playing <laughs> football. But I, I just think that Micah Parsons is ready to take over, take over this league, be one of the best dynamic uh, defensive players. And we'll see where he's going to be coming from and trying to get after Tom. How much confidence does this secondary give you? Because it really feels like there's more depth and more talent at that level than the Cowboys have had in a long time. Especially at safety. I I think the corners, I think Diggs and Anthony Brown, Jordan Lewis, I think that, you know, they're they're set. And that gives you confidence. But I think the upgrade at safety, especially from that first game, week one, you didn't see the guys like J. Ron Kearse playing this type of role. You didn't see Malik Hooker out there. I think, and Donovan Wilson as well, I think the safety position is really taken to another level. It really looks like that whenever J. Ron Kearse had uh, a total of 92 tackles a year ago. First safety since 2014 that was able to hit the 90 tackle mark. That's not it for Nick Eatman. Stick around because when we come back, we go to the offensive side of the football. Jason Peters is now in town. Talk about new faces. We talk about how the future Hall of Fame offense Offensive tackle could affect the depth up front. This segment was brought to you by Ashley, the official furniture store of the Dallas Cowboys. Welcome back to the Star in Frisco for more Cowboys Rewind alongside Nick Eatman. I'm Kyle Yeomans as we continue to take a look forward to new faces around this Dallas Cowboys program. And one of those is Jason Peters. Cowboys needed some depth at the offensive tackle spot, needed some options. Jason Peters gives that and brings it to the table, but it also brings a veteran mindset to that offensive line room. Jason, I think you were quoted as saying a few weeks ago you wanted to go somewhere where you had a chance to win and also pass along some knowledge. Clearly, there's a young offensive lineman here who can benefit from being around you. What, what are you looking forward to trying to transmit to him? Uh, just, just a grit, uh, finishing plays, technique, uh, knowing what to do and playing fast, uh, keeping his nose clean and stuff, you know, on and off the field. You know, I'm going to help him out. I helped him a little bit today. Just trying to get his technique and all that stuff in rhythm. How long will it take you to get ready in your mind? Uh, it'll be a couple weeks. Just, you know, being in pass and getting my feet up under me. It's not going to take long. You, you didn't like the Cowboys much when you were in Philly, you know, can you? I mean, you can't, you can't blame me, you know. Right. We, we, we rivalry. Right. Right. But, you know. How do you the, feel now? I'm just saying this. At, the, at the end of the day, uh, you know, me and Jerry go back to, to Arkansas. So, when he called me, you know, we sat down and talked and, you know, it was like love at first sight. You know, we was talking about the Hogs. He was talking about the national championship and how it changed his life. And me being a Razorback changed my life and gave me the opportunity to be here today. And when you, you have, say a couple of weeks, are you, do you have a, a game circle? Like try to be ready for Cincinnati or uh, I don't have a game circle, but I'm working to, you know, be, be ready and be available in a couple of weeks. So when you came when you came for the meeting, did any of your uh, former Eagles teammates call you, text you, say it ain't so? Uh, 
<laughs> yeah, a bunch of fans, a bunch of my teammates. I hadn't really replied back to them yet, but uh, I'll get around to that. Your, your focus to be depth or, or to start and left out? It don't matter whatever they ask me. If, if, if Smith get in there and start rolling and they want to keep him, you know, I'm going to just help him, help him along. There ain't, ain't no guy that's going to feel some kind of way if I don't get in there and start. But if they ask me to start, I'm going to get in there and go to work. So when the Cowboys 24th pick in April came around, they selected Tyler Smith, the offensive tackle out of Tulsa. Then they move him to guard. They think he's going to contend for that starting left guard spot. Now he's moving back out the left tackle with Tyron Smith being hurt. And then they bring in Jason Peters. It's been a revolving door on this offensive line. How can Peters kind of settle things down? Well, he can settle things down by settling down the rookie, settling down Tyler Smith. And, and that's one thing that he talked about in there is that, that that's a, a role that he's trying to do. And you don't get a guy that's been here almost two full decades of playing in the NFL and say, hey, I'll, I'll go and be a mentor, be, be a, a coach. Now, he still thinks he can play. The Cowboys still think he definitely think he can still play. But we're going to find out just exactly how this whole thing shuffles. I, I think how Tyler Smith plays, how McGovern plays, how Biotish, how Steele. I think Zach Martin's going to be okay, but um, I'm going on a limb there. But I think for all the other <laughs> positions, you know, we'll see. There's got to be a, a role for a nine-time Pro Bowler. Yeah, what, what could those roles look like? Is he going to be pigeonholed into left tackle when Tyler Smith either plays well or doesn't play well or maybe is, is in a, a position where he can't go? Or can he move around a little bit? Can he go to right tackle? Can he go play guard? He really hasn't done it much. He's played some right guard. He's played some right tackle. And then he goes back to left tackle. I mean, left tackle's been his spot. And I think that it's probably the best spot for him to play for the Cowboys. I think Tyler Smith can move around a little bit. Let's we'll just see what, what they need. But these things have a, a tendency of working it, itself out. I think it will in this case. I still feel like Jason Peters is going to be playing left tackle at some point for the Cowboys. It's definitely a – it's chess pieces to yeah. move around for this Cowboys team. And Mike McCarthy actually had a chess reference earlier in the week. He says he doesn't want to play chess with Tom Brady. Special thanks for Nick Eatman joining us here. But when we come back, how can that Cowboys defense confuse the seven-time Super Bowl champion in Brady as he comes to AT&T Stadium on Sunday when we come back with more Cowboys Rewind. Welcome back to Cowboys Rewind. And as Tampa Bay comes to town this week at AT&T Stadium, Dallas Cowboys defensively are going to have some confusion tactics to try and get after Tom Brady. Can it be done? Aisha Morrison on the brand new episode of Girls Talk, Boys Talk says absolutely that is the case. I know you enjoyed one of his other comments that he had to say. It was actually, like I said, Mike's gotten pretty good at some of his sound bites this year. Uh, when you're playing Tom Brady, you can't play. He's like, I'm not. I'm, we're not going to play chess with Tom Brady. Yeah, because he's seen. Because he has essentially seen it all. But I will say that it still plays. I think that this game, uh, the Cowboys defense can't has the guys and the versatility of different gentlemen that maybe you can throw him off his game. Maybe he doesn't know who's coming. Maybe he doesn't know if it's a Micah or Anthony Barr coming up that, that A or B gap. Maybe he doesn't see that. So I just – or he sees it and – this closing speed is too much for me because we have guys that defense is fast. So I I feel I feel the same way. Yeah, I agree. I will have to say that one of the things that I'm going to be looking at for sure is I think you have to take into account the fact that Arians ran this really fast offense, mm -hmm. and you have Todd Bowles now who's going to be more defensive minded, yep. Yep. right? And so obviously taking into account those types of things, but also you always hear with Tom and really any veteran quarterback too, but especially Tom. There's jokes about when people like the refs will call just for someone <laughs> touching him. He does not like to be like agitated, mm -hmm. right? And so like you said, coming at the middle is going to be really big. I am excited for a guy like Micah Parsons. Yeah, I really am. When you talk about strength. Strength, that is our defense right now going yeah. against their weakness it was a little more evenly matched I feel like last year in terms of like the strengths and strengths but this year especially they have some serious vulnerabilities and I really feel like there's some really great opportunities to disrupt that pocket so there it is girls talk boys talk the newest podcast on the Dallas Cowboys radio network and of course you can check that out throughout the week on dallascowboys.com We've got the newest podcast. We've got the newest podcaster in Patrick No C. Walker from DallasCowboys.com. Joining us in Patrick, confusing Tom Brady is a tough thing to do. We talked earlier with Nick Eatman, with Brian Broaddus about a scouting report that you could certainly bring to the table to get after Tom Brady, but is confusing him really an option? It is an option. It's doable. 
unfortunately, there's nothing Tom Brady has not seen <laughs> in this game. But what the Cowboys are going to have to do is use personnel and change up things as, as far as how they attack Tom Brady. Is it going to be Micah Parsons going off of the edge? Is it going to be Micah Parsons on stunts on the inside? Is it going to be Anthony Barr dropping back in coverage? Or will Anthony Barr be asked to go to the line and rush off of the edge, something he's done in the past? It's all about confusing Tom Brady, not necessarily with scheme, but with personnel. Where's the pressure coming from? He has to find where's Waldo. You mentioned a couple of, well, where's Waldo? That's always a tough thing to do. But you, you look at the, the personnel on that side of the football for Dan Quinn. It feels like there's playmakers at all three levels along the way. How does that help him kind of play the chess and move those pieces around to at least even a guy who's seen everything still makes him a little bit uh, second guessing along the way as well. By switching up fronts, you're going to see a Cowboys team whose base front outside of nickel is mostly a 4-3, but the Cowboys are also going to go down in the three down man front as well. And when they do that, you're going to see a three tech and Neville Gallimore pop out to the outside. And he now becomes your edge rusher. Those types of things. Sam Williams, if he's active for this game, the rookie uh, second round pick, he's going to be active in the interior and on the exterior as well. And then that frees up Micah Parsons to potentially pin his ears back and go and get Brady or maybe drop back in coverage. You have that secondary Trayvon Diggs he's going to apply pressure to Mike Evans you have a safety unit that's suddenly one of the strengths of the Cowboys defense at every level like you mentioned the Cowboys are going to have to uh, a means of attacking Tom Brady yeah you look at also the interior of that defensive line looking stronger than it has been in years past with Neville Gallimore Osa Digizua Tristan Hill Quentin Bohanna who's had a great uh, preseason a great offseason as well with three guys in the interior gone for Tom Brady in this offense from this matchup a year ago. Their left guard, their starting center, their starting right guard, all not available here in week one. Is that a weakness for this Tampa Bay offense to get up in the face of Tom Brady? It is absolutely a weakness. Much like the Cowboys have interior questions on the offensive line, as do the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They lose Ali Marpet, a pro bowler from 2021 to retirement. They lose Alex Kappa, a starting offensive lineman. Now you have a young guy at center. You have a rookie second round pick on the uh, at left guard. Interior pressure is going to be the name of the game. We mentioned Quentin Bohanna, Neville Gallimore, Chauncey Ghost, and Oso Digizua. The interior of the Cowboys defensive line, they have the ability to win these one-on-one matchups, and they're going to have to do so on Sunday. How much does Micah Parsons play a role in the game plan this week? We're speaking on versatility. There's no one more, more versatile than Parsons. He's going to be massive for the Cowboys. Keep in mind, Micah Parsons, the Cowboys knew what they had in him to a degree when they drafted him, but it wasn't really until week two that they figured it out last year. Micah Parsons was only sent at Tom Brady a handful of times less than that one quarterback hit no sacks expect that to change expect Michael Parsons versatility to be put on full display to keep Tom Brady guessing you can hear Patrick no see Walker on talking Cowboys throughout the week and you can check out his writing on DallasCowboys.com through the entire regular season for the Cowboys here at the star in Frisco but when we come back we've got plenty more to come and we've got to look at really the step backwards in the deep blue series Plenty of documentaries for you to check out. One on Trayvon Diggs himself as he tries to shut down this Tampa Bay offense. Coming up on Sunday when we come back with more Cowboys Rewind. Back here with more Cowboys Rewind from the star in Frisco as we continue to get ready for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Dallas Cowboys coming up on Sunday night football. And throughout this episode, we've had an opportunity to look at some new faces and meet some new people. But also, it's time to look back at old stories, and there's no better time to do so than right before the start of a brand new chapter of the Dallas Cowboys history and another chapter of Deep Blue Stories. <laughs> Everybody's battle's different. I could hide by mental illness and football because that's what we're trained to do. If I'm not being genuine or transparent and doing everything that I can for myself, I'm hurting my neighbor. Intercepted by Diggs! I believed about Everson was, but he caught everything. I have the Cowboys record with 11 interceptions. I have the Cowboys record with 11 interceptions. Mind control the body, not the body controlling the mind. It was just a question of taking the talent that was obviously there and just doing the right things with it.
You can catch all of the Deep Blue documentaries on the DallasCowboys.com website, on the Dallas Cowboys Now app, and of course, all the Cowboys social channels as well. That does it here for us on Cowboys Rewind. Week one is here. The NFL season is back. And a reminder, the Cowboys take on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at at and Stadium, 720 kickoff on NBC. I'm Kyle Yeoman saying so long. We'll see you next week from the Star in Frisco. Cowboys Rewind was brought to you by AT&T, the official 5G innovation partner of the Dallas Cowboys. SWBC Mortgage, join the more than 120,000 customers that we've helped define their happier way home. Visit SWBCMortgage.com to find a pro today. And by NFL Game Pass. You'll never miss a game again. Enjoy full and condensed game replays from week one to the Super Bowl.